Good evening. And almost a very happy Sabbath to you. In just a few minutes or half an hour or so, we will see Sabbath coming in, and that is the most blessed time of the week, isn't it? On behalf of the Berman University Choral Union, our director, Dr. Wendelin Pajitka Monroe, and our accompanist, Nicole Bartolet, I would like to welcome you to Splendor, our spring touring concert. The mission of the choir is simple, to tell others about the love of Jesus through our music and through our actions. For years, with the blessing of the Holy Spirit, we have been able to do that. However, there are times when, both for the choir and for the listeners, the message gets lost in the music. Tonight, I invite you to forget about the splendor of our combined voices, forget about the splendor of the musical arrangements, and concentrate on the message. The message of the muted splendor of Christ's birth, the compassionate splendor of his life on earth, the agonizing splendor of his death, the triumphant splendor of his resurrection, the rapidly approaching glorious splendor of his second coming, and the everlasting splendor of life with him in a world made new, God's ultimate splendor. Good evening, bonsoir. Um, <laughs> I would like to invite you to just bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you this blessed evening uh, for giving us the opportunity to come together uh, and to celebrate you. I ask that as we commence our program that you empower us and enable us to minister to each and every individual present tonight. I ask that you touch the hearts and the minds of these people and that you help our ministry and song to resonate with them in a special way. Lastly, Lord, I pray that you'll be present with us tonight. Be at the forefront and help us to glorify you as we enjoy this wonderful program. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. There is only one who deserves our homage, our praise and glory. He is our creator, our redeemer. He asks us to come before him in the beauty of his holiness. Each time we fall on our knees in prayer to him, we, by faith, give him the praise that he only deserves. But best of all, one day soon, by our mortal flesh in the splendor of his presence, we will cast our crowns at his feet, bow before him on our knees, and confess that he is the Lord of Lords.
The Awakening speaks about the glorious gift of music with its beauty, unifying power, and ability to heal. In a dream, the composer asks us to contemplate a world without music. Then the dreamer arises to a percussive alarm to wake the song of joy and gladness with crescendos of praise and abounding gratitude to our loving and thoughtful Heavenly Father, the giver of our song.
This next selection is a traditional African-American spiritual that encourages us to hold on amidst the storms that we face day to day. Abeni Jene arranged this piece in the midst of tragedy as a way to express her feelings. She encourages choirs performing this piece and audiences listening to it to find their own personal testimony and story and to be encouraged by it. The words of this spiritual may seem very simple, but I encourage you to meditate on them and think about the difficulties you are going through. And I hope that this song helps you to find strength to hold on just a little while longer. Too often, we try to walk in the Lord's path without the Lord. We need to journey in the path of the Lord with the Lord himself. If we do so, our walks will be exponentially easier. 
if we include him in our journey to him, nothing shall make us stumble, nothing shall make us stammer, nothing shall make us slip. If we listen, we shall hear the Spirit's voice. It will guide us so that, again, we do not waver, slip, or fall. In the end, let us walk with him so that we may not stumble at all, so that we can eventually walk in his golden streets with him one day. In his kingdom, nothing shall make us fall. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Nothing gonna stumble by Gilpin and Parker. Bonsoir tout le monde. Trop souvent, nous essayons de marcher dans le chemin du Seigneur sans le Seigneur. Nous devons marcher dans son chemin avec lui. Si nous ne marchons pas avec lui, ça va être dur. Si nous l'incluons dans notre chemin, rien ne nous fera tomber, rien ne nous fera euh, Stammer, rien, rien ne fera glisser. Si nous, si nous écoutons, nous entendrons euh, la voix de l'Esprit. Il, euh, il va nous guider, so that, euh, encore, nous ne chancelons pas, nous ne tombons pas. Euh, marchons avec lui pour ne pas pouvoir euh, tomber. Si nous marchons avec lui, un jour nous pourrons marcher avec lui dans, ses, euh, dans son chemin d'or. Dans son royaume, rien ne nous fera tomber. Proverbe, Proverbe 3, versets 5 et 6 dit, euh, là, là c'est la, la Bible que je vais traduire, mais euh, « Ayez foi en le Seigneur avec tout votre cœur, tout votre cœur et ne soyez pas euh, avec votre propre understanding. Dans toutes vos, dans toutes vos manières, euh, acknowledge him et il va faire vos euh, chemins droits. Not gonna stumble or slide. Not gonna break 
verse 5 in the English Standard Version reads, On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. As residents on this sinful planet, it is difficult for us to comprehend the splendor of God as we have nothing to compare it to. Even if we think of synonyms, magnificence, brilliance, light, they are dulled by the gloom of sin. It is only by faith that we can see the true splendor of God. By faith, we accept the sacrifice of Jesus. His death has given us life. His resurrection has restored us to a unique purpose, that of reflecting his splendor to all those around us. That is the true meaning of our lives, your life shining his light. As the chamber singers sing the choral anthem, Splendor, I invite you to prayerfully consider how you, through the power of Jesus, can reflect his splendor and his majesty.
The story is told of an avid hiker. We'll call her Susan, who was traveling alone in the mountains. One day, while refilling her flask of water from a cool mountain stream, she found a precious stone. The following day, she met another hiker who, not having planned well for his trip, was hungry, and Susan opened up her bag in order to share her food. As she did, the hiker noticed her stone and asked Susan to give it to him. She did so without any hesitation. The hiker left in a hurry, uh, all the while rejoicing in his great fortune, knowing that the stone was valuable and could be sold for enough to allow him to retire comfortably for the rest of his life. A few days later, Susan was surprised to once again see the hiker. And she was even more surprised to find out that he had come back to return the stone to her. I've been thinking, he said. This is an extremely valuable stone, but I want to give it back to you in the hope that you can give me something even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled to give me the stone. Susan smiled. It's the joy of giving. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 in the New International Version reads, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Lest we think that this statement applies only to Bible times or to just of those of us who believe in the Bible today, the Chinese have a proverb that says, if you always give, you will always have. And the American author and motivational speaker Jim Rohn once said, only by giving are you able to receive more than you already have. Tonight, I'd like to invite you to be a cheerful giver, and by so doing, to receive more than you already have. Having a choir is not inexpensive. There are, of course, fixed costs, such as the cost of music, subsidized outfits. In addition, as a touring choir, we have the costs of transportation, hotels, meals, and more. As we are on our spring tour throughout eastern Canada this May, thanks to an increase in fuel costs, our bus alone costs over $24,000 for this 10-day field uh, choir tour. Yes. <laughs> and quite frankly, we cannot do it without your help. In your programs, you will have found an envelope. Please take that envelope and fill it out with the amount that you feel that you can cheerfully give. Or, if you don't have any cash or check with you, you can always put your credit card information in that and place it in the envelope. Also, we do have a point of sale terminal with us that we can process your credit card immediately after the, uh, the concert, just there at the rear table. One of our choir members will be happy to help you with that. For those of you who might be listening uh, live streaming, you can also donate by going to the university website at bermanu.ca and click on the Give link. You will then be taken to, pay to a page where you will be able to scroll down and please make sure that you select the Choral Union and chamber singers option. That way your gift will go directly to us. Whatever method that you use, any gift over $10 is eligible for a tax receipt. And for any gift of $25 or higher, we will be thrilled to be able to put your name on the back of our programs for our next concerts. And by the way, I see that we do have some young people here uh, in, the, uh, in the audience. If any of you happen to be interested in uh, visiting and perhaps attending Berman University, maybe joining this fine choir someday, at the bottom of the inside of your programs, you see that we are traveling with four faculty members from Berman University, and they will be happy to chat with you uh, after the concert. 
I invite you now to bow your heads for a word of prayer before we take up the offering. Our dear Heavenly Father, as the sun rays are dying and its Sabbath is dawning upon us, we ask in a special way for your Holy Spirit to be with us. Lord, the Sabbath should be welcomed with joy and rejoicing. And tonight, as we are singing, we are certainly rejoicing, rejoicing in your love and in your soon coming. Dear Lord, that we ask that as this offering is taken up, that you will multiply the efforts of the money collected so that we can, in turn, share your love with others and save them for your soon return. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. shepherd no one shall I know I feed in green pastures safe folded I rest he leadeth my soul where the still waters
Good evening. Fairest Lord Jesus is a beloved hymn that has been sung by Christians around the world since the 17th century. Each time we hear its timeless melody and powerful lyrics, we should be inspired and uplifted as we are reminded of the incomparable greatness of our Lord and Savior and the splendor of his soon return. He is creator. He rules all nature. He is God and man in one. As we view the exquisite scenes in nature, the perfect flower, the colorful bird and butterfly, the majestic tree, the spray of twinkling stars in a night sky, they all pale in comparison to his beauty. To him and him alone be the glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore.
In this world full of sorrow and pain, we can feel as we are suffering alone. Sometimes we can feel as if life is just tossing us around and tearing us apart. Sometimes we can feel so lost that we start to lose all hope. Our next piece serves as a reminder that although we may experience quite a bit of suffering in this world, God has made a home for us. A home where there is no pain, no loneliness, and no tears in that city called heaven. Stanisha Diligence is our soprano soloist.
This next piece, titled The Promised Land, tells the story of the Israelites making their way to the promised land of Canaan. And we as a choir sing this song with the hope of finding our own promised land in heaven. This land will be, as the song says, free from chilling winds and poisonous breath and far away from any sickness, pain, or death. It paints a beautiful picture of immortal trees abundant with fruit and glistening springs flowing with milk and honey. The splendor of this land, through none of our own merits, is promised to us freely. Though we face struggles the side of heaven, there is something greater that lies ahead. We do see glimpses of it in small kindnesses and things that make our hearts swell in the things that help us see the true and good out there. But the whole picture, the beautiful splendor, will be revealed to us one day, a life everlasting, more beautiful and full than we could ever imagine. This is the promise. All we need to do is accept it.
Good evening, bonsoir. Ça va bien? Très bien, très bien. Thank you. Thank you. We are just delighted to be here. Um, before I share what I have to share, can I ask you to bow your heads as we pray? Uh, Father in heaven, as we, at the commencement of this Sabbath, Lord, we again invite your presence as we contemplate upon your birth, your life on earth, your death, your resurrection, and your coming King. We pray for the Holy Spirit one more time, Lord, to be in this place and to talk to us in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. In our post-enlightenment imagination, we question a God who makes an unmarried poor young woman pregnant. Yet, who are we in our limited understanding to tell God what he should or should not do to get to us? Swiss theologian Karl Barth once said, the incarnation is inconceivable, but not absurd. No pun intended, I suppose. For Bath, God is not simply an object of human experience, but God is known through divine revelation in Jesus. The Apostle John simply puts it this way, the word became flesh and lived among us. A miracle in the sense of divine intrusion that overturns the laws of nature. God came as a Jewish peasant from despised Nazareth. Many people were offended. They wanted a God of glory entering into the world from the top, properly introduced by the right people and with the appropriate protocols. Instead, the people got Jesus from Nazareth, entering the world from the bottom, a man with a message of the humility of God, of God's identification with people and things that don't matter very much in this world. He carried his message to the extreme, driving the humility of God all the way to the cross. Jesus' message was not just about getting on in this world, but it was a whole new world, making his existence much more troubling. He was murdered by the authorities, not because of the peculiarity of his birth, but for the revolutionary quality of his life. He was violently tortured to death, not because he was a baby conceived out of wedlock, but because of what he said and did as a man. His advent provoked a crisis in our intellects and our politics, unmasking the relationship between our cherished notions of what can or what cannot be. Yet, Without a God who is passionately involved and committed to us, the prospect for the future of this world will be gloom and doom. What is the glory of God? God's glory is hanging on a cross rather than laying in a manger. Jesus' sacrificial death was the moment of God's victory over evil. Nothing can be more foreign to the natural heart of a man than victory through surrender, a kingdom through sacrifice. Nothing could be more natural than to say, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Nothing could be more supernatural than being the son of God to become obedient unto death. Yet Jesus' way the way of the cross proved the way of the crown. In Jesus, a consummating chapter in the story of how God will stop at nothing to save us. He gave us a new and paradoxical definition of God. 
a definition of the humility of God. The majesty that had no way to lay his head. The grandeur that was meek and lowly. The beauty with no comeliness, no form, that any should desire him. The splendor of a lonely wanderer, weary and footsore, with nails through his hands and his feet. That gloomy Friday evening turned into a glorious Sunday morning. That Sunday morning, Jesus transformed everything into newness. In the words of the prophet of old, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. In Isaiah 65, verse 17, the revelator heard the promise that he will make all things new. And in vision, he saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the former things will pass away. Behold, I make all things new.
Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe through the week, bringing us to your blessed Sabbath day. Thank you for giving us life, a church to worship with, a choir to sing for your glory. Lord God, we pray that the songs that were sung from the sea tonight, the word that was spoken, may it all be useful in our lives, may it be ingrained in our hearts, and be a blessing to each and every one of us. Lord God, I pray that this church will be blessed and its fruits should be shown. I pray for the choir in the tour that's left, and I pray for each and every one of us in our difficulties. We love you, Lord. Keep each and every one of us safe and help us to sing for you in heaven. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
If memory serves me correctly, it's been four years since we have been here, and we had such a good time that when the opportunity came to come and be here again, we leapt at it. But I would definitely like to thank Pastor Harold, as well as the church board and everybody who has come this evening, as well as those who have prepared the lunches for us. Once again, on behalf of Berman University Choral Union, our director, Dr. Wendelin Pajitka Monroe, and our accompanist, Nicole Bartolet, I would like to thank you for joining us here tonight. Your presence, whether in person or online, has been a blessing to us, and we hope that our music has in turn been a blessing to you. As you leave this evening, may you take the splendor of our Creator, Redeemer, and coming king and reflect that splendor to others that you encounter and we pray that soon we with one voice will be able to praise him who made it all possible in the splendor of the heavenly kingdom thank you and good night